At the heart of the White Bluff Resort stands the White Bluff Chapel. The roots of the chapel extend back to 1999, when a group of residents formed a Bible study which met in a local home. It just started off with somebody recognizing the need to provide a Bible study for the salesmen that were here on the weekend selling lots. That, that was the genesis of the chapel. Several families, they met in homes for a while, and it just grew from there. The Holy Spirit blessed this gathering, and it drew more and more people. As the numbers increased, the Bible study moved from a home to meeting spaces available within the resort. And so in the beginning, you know, there was maybe 12, 15 people. Yeah, yeah that was a big crowd. <laughs> <laughs> it was very uh, heartwarming. It was very spiritual for us because such a small group had such strong beliefs and such commitments that it was, uh, it was, it was wonderful. Our faith wasn't challenged, our faith was enhanced because we knew that God was leading those people because their faith was just so strong that you were just, you were roped in. The gathering soon became a church where songs were sung, the word of God was proclaimed, prayers were lifted, and people of faith were energized to reach their community for Christ. We weren't here at the absolute beginning, but we did attend a service in the Lone Star Room and we barely got in. It was packed completely with very enthusiastic, worshipful people that were just happy to be there. With the growth, it soon became apparent that a permanent building was needed for the burgeoning congregation. I think the biggest challenge was perhaps seeing how big God's plans were, and we weren't in a position to handle that. And waiting for the Lord to move on all of that, and when He started bringing more and more people here, then we knew we have to do something. This is not going to work to keep in the admin building. We did move to the conference room, but then that became too small too, and we just didn't have a physical home for the chapel. Through prayer and visionary leadership, the planning of a new chapel building was launched. It was scary to, to just say, we're so few and the project is so big. And our faith was tested because there were only like 100 members at the time and there was real concern about whether we could finance a building like this. Individual faith was probably the biggest key to success. Not focusing on the person, but focusing on God's plans and focusing upon what the Holy Spirit was trying to show us. Those early leaders caught God's vision of ministry in White Bluff and made it their mission to be ambassadors of the gospel. Our minister, Maurice Martin, had no doubt. He said, if, if the Spirit is right, and he focused on the gospel. But I think just Maurice is leading and saying, just, we just need to trust that this is where we're going in the, with this project. And we all jointly prayed that our greatest dreams were realized. In 2002, ground was broken on the current building. They knew that the roots of the chapel extended far beyond their time and place. The roots extended deep into the history of God's redemptive work, secured firmly on the rock of Jesus Christ. Every day we come in to help save money. The builder didn't have anybody cleaning up every day. We did all that. Pulled wires, we did all kinds of things. We had uh, money in the game. Prayerfully, the group continued to seek and discern God's will in providing ministry. You know, one of the things that I found very interesting about this chapel was the involvement. The pastor had the pastor's duties, but the church was pretty much run by the lay people. In 2004, the new building was dedicated to the glory of God. So here we stand over 20 years later. Much has happened over these years. How the chapel exceeded my expectations was it surprised me and my relationship with God also grew off of what we did. I'm thankful for that. If you ask any of the youth leaders, they will tell you that the number of kids that are 
turning out to participate not only in church activities, but also on Sunday night youth programs uh, and other things that come up during the year has been very significant. We all know that it begins at a very early age. We are very thankful that those opportunities are here at White Bluff Chapel. The community has grown. New ministries have begun. The scope of our ministry has broadened. New mission endeavors have emerged. The people are this chapel and you will not find a better group of people to, that will love and support you the way the White Bluff Chapel members do. Here in White Bluff Chapel, it's warm and comfortable and it feels like a place that we're supposed to be. This is what a church family is supposed to be and having that church support. We were searching for a church. Um, we didn't we know it, yeah, we didn't know it, but we um, had that missing part in our lives. And when we came in the doors of this church, the first Sunday we visited, we knew this is what we've been missing. And we knew this was our place. The day I walked into here, I opened up. And that's the blessing. Because of a need for space, two worship services are now required. In those 20 years, time has marched on. Many of our original members have passed or moved away, but the vision and mission have remained the same, to be faithful followers of Christ. One of the things that has impressed me about this church the most is that the Holy Spirit is what we seek first uh, in all of our decisions. Even the growth project that we're talking about doing, it's not our will, it's God's Spirit leading us to do whatever it is that He wants for His plan and His purpose. I think that's kind of the cornerstone of this building and the people that are in it, is it starts with prayer and it ends with prayer. I see the Holy Spirit moving in the growth of our church. If you want to serve Christ, you come to the right place. As we take the baton in 2024 and beyond, we stay focused on Jesus and His great commission to us to go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The future of the White Bluff Chapel is bright. We continue to experience numerical and spiritual growth. What's coming is uh, some joy uh, that we're all looking forward to, and we'll all be able to uh, house a greater numbers, feed greater numbers, and love greater numbers. It seems like the sky's the limit, and with our growing youth program, with the growth from Cleburne and Fort Worth, we're just going to continue to grow, and who knows, it might be a preschool, might be a Mother's Day Out, might be more uh, youth programs. To further meet the spiritual needs of our community, we greatly need to increase our building's capacity. New space is needed for discipleship and training classes. A multi-purpose space for fellowship and worship is a necessity. Space for new offices is required. In following the steps of our predecessors, the pioneers who saw beyond potential obstacles, we need to keep the vision of God before us. We need to have the boldness of knowing that with God, all things are possible. The future, I think, looks very bright. I think we have a lot to be proud of, but we can't rest on our laurels. I mean, we, as a congregation, I believe we're really focused on what God has in store for us. We're looking to Him for leadership. Uh, we're looking to see where God's at work, and we want to join Him in that effort and facilitate that and reach the people that He has for us to reach. And if we're going to reach the people that He has for us out there, we need to expand our facilities. Initially, we were 100% adults of a certain age, let's put it that way. But where we're headed is to reach families and, and children and teenagers. And uh, that's, a, that's a really great opportunity and we're glad to see it happening. Well, think about this, a church full of old people will one day die. Because if you don't add new younger people and, and younger ideas and things. That, that old church with old people, what, when they're all gone, it's gone. With our new youth program, I think it's gonna, it, it's gonna even explode more. We need more space, we just, we did. 
We need that to, uh, to help the growth. Having more environment for more of the music to be expanded and the instruments there, I'm excited for that. We are most excited about the children's area, for sure, for him to be able to have a place that he can play and run around. You know, expanding a church, that means the church is growing. This church body's on fire, and being able to expand with the uh, facilities is just, it's a huge blessing. In this campaign, we believe the goal of raising $4 million is totally achievable. It will enable us to reach more people, to change more lives, and impact our community for Christ, both now and in the future. By the grace of God, the White Bluff Chapel is strong and vibrant. With God's vision as our guide, we will continue our mission to make disciples and to minister to the folks in White Bluff, in Whitney, in Hill County, in Bosque County, and beyond. And I know that even though the amount seems large, it's nothing to God. So I am excited to see what he'll do. Jesus challenged us early on when we're, if we truly believe in him that we're gonna give of our, our gifts, our talents. When we talk about this uh, God's vision, our mission, I think if we truly believe that this building expansion is God's will. You have to be a part of that. I believe financial giving is very important as part of your Christian walk. Over the years, as far as financial blessing, learning what the giving does and then seeing the results to better grow and to reach people. Everybody should participate at some level depending on what you know, their, their time, their resources allow. I think when, with finances, follow someone's finances, you'll follow their heart. You know, where, where you're putting your money is where you, what your real interests are. Our congregation's growing, it's not getting smaller, it's getting younger and we need some room. We need some room to grow into that footprint that God's laid out for us. It's really important that, that everybody is on board and move in the same direction. Everyone should participate in this campaign because everyone gets something, something new out of it. To me, what this building campaign is all about is prayer. God will provide the people that can give what they can and it'll be enough. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for the mission. And if God wants this done, it, it's in His hands. Throughout the history of the White Bluff Chapel, we have been incredibly blessed. As we think about the days past and the beginning of our chapel, and even today, we can recognize that the hand of God has been upon us. Now we look to the future in this incredible endeavor that He has placed before us. With one voice, voices of the the present and the past and the future, that we can pray the prayer of the Apostle Paul that he said to the, uh, to the church in Ephesus. He says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more and above all we could ask or think through the power that is at work within us. To Him, through Christ, be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. May we as God's people, as we look ahead to the future, to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ, just as Paul said, forever and ever. Amen.